going. Hello, everybody. It's Steve Coleman again, Stevie B at PTC with another installment of PTC Live. We have another fantastic guest with us today and an esteemed member of our college faculty um, and an esteemed community member, um, Mr. Joshua Lindsay. Josh, how are you today? I'm doing great, Steve. How are you doing today? Well, that's, man, I'm just peachy keen, my man, peachy keen. It's always a good day, and particularly when we have an opportunity to talk to good people. Let me just jump right in here and say to the people that are watching, Josh Lindsay is our Dean of Business and Information Technology and Public Services Division. And Josh, why don't you tell, tell the, the people a little bit about what that stands, I mean, what that means, what all comes under that title. It's a long title, and we know that there are a number of programs that fall under your leadership, so we want you to tell us about them. Okay, yes. Um, when you look at our program, it's a business information technology and public service division. We have eight different programs that fall under that. One of the programs is the administrative office technology program or department. In that, if anybody interested in becoming like a, doing any type of clerical work or somebody may be interested in medical coding, there's numerous different jobs that fall within that program they would be interested in going into that one if they're interested in that type of work. We also have a business program. In our business program, if somebody's interested in accounting, management, or office management, that would be a great program for them to enter into. We also have our commercial arts program or department. And commercial arts, if somebody had the admiration to be a, a graphic designer, um, if they want to be involved in photography, if they love drawing, this is a great program. Um, oftentimes, like when I say drawing, somebody may be interested in doing some type of artwork for a newspaper. They may want to do drawings for books. So it's a lot of different things that will fall under that program also. We also have the computer technology program. Um, which is a huge thing going on in our community now. Um, those individuals can do everything from coming out program and get degrees in programming, networking, and cybersecurity. And you probably heard cybersecurity is one of the biggest things going on right now um, when it talks about computers. And this is a great field for somebody to get involved in. We also have a criminal justice program. If somebody's interested in becoming a law enforcement officer or working in the court system or working in the correctional field. So somebody want to be a police officer, somebody want to be a judge, somebody want to be a probation officer, somebody want to be a detention officer, somebody want to work with juveniles. This is a great field for them to go into. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have our early childhood technology program. If somebody loves working with young people, um, may want to work at a, a elementary school, help teach uh, kindergartners, or they may want to work at a daycare center. This would be a great place to start. If somebody's interested in, we also have another program, funeral service. Um, funeral service is a booming industry to go into. We are one of the only colleges in the South that has a funeral service program. And in our funeral service program, we got funeral director. Uh, somebody can get a funeral director certificate. They also can get an embalming certificate here. And if they decide to go through our degree program, they can get the skill sets for both of those. And then we also have the human service degree. Um, we're talking about human service degree. We're talking about people who are going out and helping people within our community. They may be doing everything from different forms of social work or going to two people houses and just helping them out in different types of ways, maybe investigating child abuse or something to that effect. So out of those eight programs, one of the things we also make sure our people do is provide some type of actual work experience for our students. And sometimes you may have heard the terminology of internship or cooperative work experience. In this, we make sure our students get the actual hands-on work within the field. One of the biggest things about our program is that all our faculty members have experience in what they teach. So this is not like going to a college where 
people went to school and now they come back and they just teaching something that they were taught. Our people actually went to school, learned information, practiced the information, and now they have came back and they helping people by teaching them. And so many of them still work in the field also. Wow, that, that, that is most certainly a full plate. And you talk about some of these programs and these are all viable programs in our entire region, you know, we serve Greenwood, Lawrence, Edgefield, Abbeville, McCormick, Newberry, and Saluda. We have students in all those areas. We have businesses and, and industries in those areas where our students are seeking work. And students also seek work outside of those areas because they have the transferable skills to be out and go find those sorts of um, occupations. And, and the hands-on experience part, just talk a little bit about that because in business and commercial art, uh, computer technology, even in those fields like criminal justice and early childhood development, people have an opportunity to go out and practice those things in a real, you know, in a live capacity to build experience to make them more employable. And in some cases, I, I, um, people that are working in those fields get those degrees and find themselves advancing in their career. You're 100% correct. This is a vital skill when we start talking about being able to go out into the field and make sure you can practice what you have learned. Because not only does it build a student's confidence up that they really understand what they have learned in the classroom, but it's also, you no, know, not just to take away what you learned in the classroom, but it's also a resume builder. Because now people know who they're hiring. They say, they may, you may get hired by the person that actually you did your internship with or your cooperative work experience with. But even if you do not, Guess what? You have built up your resume and there you have now references that people can call up and say, hey, I heard such and such did an uh, internship at your department. Yeah, that was a good person. We love to have them. Unfortunately, right now we got to freeze. But if y'all y'all be crazy to miss this opportunity to hire this person. So, you know, oftentimes we hear that in our programs, which is a great thing. And, you know, when you have people that work in the field who are teaching you, then you got people who are actually in the field working, giving you a good reference. It's easy for our students to get jobs. Yeah, I, you know, I, from a personal experience with our Project uh, Genesis program, you know, we've had young men that were in commercial arts, they were in computer technology, they were in criminal justice, um, and I'm seeing these guys working in their fields now. And these were individuals, some of whom were traditional age students, you know, maybe. Uh, 18 to 22 years old, but we've also found that a number of our older students that were in those programs who were non-traditional students, students who were 25, 28, 30, 35, have come back to those programs, these programs in business, information technology, and public service, and found new career paths. Um, and we're not going to even talk about funeral services because we know that was never going anyplace. <laughs> <laughs> Um, talk a little bit about our Southeast Center for Funeral Services. It's, 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 it's an extremely unique program and one of very few and only two in our service area in the Southeast. That is correct. Um, and you, the great thing about our funeral service program, we have three individuals there who are very skilled, um, who also still constantly building on their resume they within their associate, uh, accreditation association. Mm -hmm. So these are not just regular instructors. These are instructors that work in the field that also provide information about accreditation to other places, national accreditation to other places about this information. We do, um, we practice stuff like cremation for pets here at Piedmont Tech. Um, the embalming, they're actually doing hands-on embalming here at Piedmont Tech. They're practicing up those skills being a great funeral director because oftentimes people think they know what they're doing or can imagine themselves doing something, but when you put it into practice and you're talking to people who actually have done their work, they can catch those little subtle things to help improve your skills. And that's what our people are constantly doing on a daily basis teaching our students and make sure they refine those skills to make sure they're the best at whatever they want to do once they get into that system of funeral service. Sure. And being in charge of, of such a large grouping of, of programs within your division, again, business information, business information technology and public services, 
you're tied to business and industry relationships in our service districts, in, our, in, in, our, in the counties that we serve. You have community uh, program advisory boards that influence um, our teaching and our, and our strategies for preparing people to go out to work um, and to be effective in their working environments. Tell us a little bit about your relationship, our, the college's relationship within your division, uh, pertaining to your division, um, and how we're working with our advisory boards to make sure that our students are getting all that they need and are even more employable in these programs. Every year, twice a year, we have meetings with our advisory boards. Um, the program directors within those programs, they select different people who are in the industry and they may be outside of the state of South Carolina. We normally get people inside the state of South Carolina, but the other people have a different skill set. Like if we got an expert in cybersecurity that may live in New York. Um, we'll do video conferencing with them because they may know some different techniques that are now going on where we can utilize that different type of coding information to teach our students so they can become better people inside of that field. So every year we have two advisory boards. In those advisory board meetings, they usually last about 30 minutes to an hour. We help design our programs because we'll ask some information on what's the most upcoming thing that you think we should make sure we provide our students so they'll be more viable once they leave our school. And they'll give us information. And sometimes we change course that way. If okay. we see something that we have and they say, well, you probably need to go this route. Think mm -hmm. about adding this course to it. We'll get the information, we'll make a decision on, we need to change our course now. We'll go before the uh, course curriculum committee we explain to them that we decided to make this change because after talking to our advisory board, we find that this is the best thing that's gonna help them. And our advisory board also help us by giving us recommendations to different agencies to do internships with. Some of the people on our advisory boards, they allow students to do internships with them or they are contacts. They say, hey, these guys at Piedmont Tech, they got it going on, we need to make sure you hire one of these people or at least let them do an internship here. I guarantee you they can help you out. So that way our name is going out throughout the community and they are very essential to our program's growth. You know, Josh, I mean, that is absolutely incredible because one of the things that we pride ourselves in, in the technical college system is that we're training people for work. We're training people to be able to go out into our communities and fill those available slots in businesses and industries um, throughout our communities. Um, you know, and even we even have emerging technologies that are, that we have uh, where we're building entire facilities to service those needs. That leads me to the point, and you and I have had this conversation on a number of occasions in your office, and, um, and you know, we just chat about these things a lot. When you talk about our college's place in our communities. Um, um, again, Greenwood, Lawrence, Edgefield, Abbeville, McCormick, Newberry, and Saluda. We've branched out to where the education is there and available. People don't have to always come to Greenwood. And what are your feelings um, as one of our community and college leaders about our college's place in our communities and how we fit to meet those needs? Are we extremely valuable to the community. I have yet to go to a restaurant. I have yet to go to any business, um, to any police station, anywhere in, in our seven counties that we serve that I haven't met somebody that graduated from Piedmont Tech. Absolutely. And they talk, you know, when you have your shirt on that has Piedmont Tech emblem on it, they start talking about how proud they are from being a member of our school, now, form, now they're alumni. So um, it's an awesome thing to see because you try to find an industry in one of our seven counties that cannot be helped from having a student, a faculty member um, come there to assist them is almost impossible. So mm -hmm. from everything from graphic design, say for instance, somebody need a new brochure. Um, they want to redesign a menu at their restaurant. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Our commercial art students, they do that every day. They are a valuable source. And people will come seek out our college faculty and say, hey, do you have somebody who can help us out here? Um, even before our students graduate, they're showing their abilities. 
we have some students just in photography that have been taking pictures for newspapers all around our seven counties. So these are still active students, but they're doing professional work. Yeah. And that's, you can find that in almost any field, not just my division though, any division here at Piedmont Tech, you're seeing the professionalism of our students and doing great things within our community. So the skills that we provide to the seven counties is amazing. You know, and, and perhaps just to, to, to kind of solidify that a little bit, at one point in your career, you were a, an active participating law enforcement officer. That's correct. As an example to how that takes place, you now have a unique role that our graduates, students that your division is preparing, have one awesome reference to law enforcement agencies throughout our service district and beyond. How yeah. Uh, that must be advantageous. It is, because just a real quick rundown of my resume when I was working out in the field. Um, I was a, I first started off as a public safety officer. So I was a police officer and a fireman. I graduated from fire academy, graduated from police academy. Um, I used to work for a place called Spartanburg City, which is about, I guess, from where I am, from Piedmont Tech, it's probably about 60 miles, something like that. I, during that time, I used to um, have met people from all over the upstate. Then I went to Greenville County Sheriff's Office. So I got contacts all in Greenville County. Um, then I started working for, it's a little bit different for the United Nations, but the good thing about working for the United Nations Police, that's another thing I can tell our students about. This is another route that you can go if you decide to go into the law enforcement field. Then I worked for uh, South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, which gave me the ability to go throughout the state of South Carolina, meet police chiefs all throughout the state of South Carolina. I met with different uh, prosecutors throughout the state of South Carolina. So if a person is looking for a job almost anywhere, I can kind of give you the background for law enforcement rise. I can give them the background of that police agency, um, what type of environment they're going to go into, what those type of people are looking for inside of that environment. So if a student know what they want to do, it's easier for me to direct them to that type of position to be a clerk of court, to be a law enforcement officer, to be a fireman. Um, to be a detention officer. It's just easier when you have actually worked in the field to be able to help those people out. Um, then I went to the University of South Carolina Children Law Center, where I was the disproportionate minority contact officer. So I could tell people, hey, if you're interested in working with juveniles, yeah, you can go work for the Department of Juvenile Justice, but there are other jobs that you can do. You don't have to wear a badge. You don't have to wear a uniform. There are plenty of jobs out here in the criminal justice field that you can actually do also. Um, another thing that, that uh, have, visiting your area is a lot of fun because there's a <laughs> lot of technological advancements that you've had privy to um, over the years. I know in your for those students that are in um, some of our areas, commercial arts, computer technology and, and, and funeral services, I mean, you know, the technology and the equipment that's available for training. These are students that when they come out, They've used the equipment that is available uh, uh, on campus to be prepared for real life situations in the world of work. Just a couple. If you talk about funeral services, having a, a, a crematory right there on campus. But one that's really fun also, too, um, is the, the new computer technology and emerging technology there. And when you talk about uh, 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 commercial art and, and some of the new technology there that is available to those, those instructors, and then you have a lab that has a simulator in criminal justice where there's almost no situation that you can at least visually uh, um, experience. Uh, just briefly talk about some of those types of technologies that are available, getting to the fact that our students are not just book trained, they're hands-on trained by people who have done what they want to do. Yes, Steve, that, that's probably the biggest thing that I can say, the biggest difference between us and a lot of different four-year colleges. Now, I have worked for, have taught at some four-year colleges. I'm not going to mention a name, um, but you see a lot of it more lecture-based as compared to us. Yes, we do do lecture-based, but we also do that hands-on component utilizing different simulators like you stated. But like, like I said earlier also, 
we not only practice that in the classroom, utilizing those simulators, but we also put them out in the real world. We say, hey, you learned this in here, now go practice it. And once again, you know, I would love to say it's just my division doing it, but if you go look at nursing division, nursing division is also doing these type of things. Um, within our division though, you mentioned the criminal justice program. Criminal justice program got part on training simulator. That was unheard of. We was the first college in the state of South Carolina that had a part on training simulator. Now, since then, some other colleges have picked that up. You know, you live and learn. They, it's always good to be trailblazers. It is. <laughs> um, and we used to also teach, we would also use our equipment to help other law enforcement agencies out within our seven counties. They would come over to Piedmont Tech and practice. So we here for the community. Um, other things that commercial arts, like you mentioned, the technology that they have there, the technology that they have in computer technology program um, is amazing. You, you'll see all these um, computers there and all the different technology that you can utilize within those different programs that they have. You cannot get access to most of this in any other college around. That's why, you, that's why we attract so many people. Once they see what we have, it changes the game. Um, for instance, let me also say this about the criminal justice program, since I brought that up. The simulator that we have inside, we also have an outside simulator where students practice different things such as different crime scenes. It's our mobile crime scene simulator. So when you start looking at our programs, almost every single one of our programs, they have different simulation programs so people can practice it in a classroom, perfect those skills. So we know when we send somebody out to a different location to do their internship or cooperative work experience, we know exactly what those people are going to get because we have actually practiced that in the classroom hundreds of times. So we want to perfect those skills. They get out there, they impress those people. So when they go out in the field, we know, we feel confident that all of our students are going to do a great job once they leave us and be able to help our community out. Excellent. I mean, that, that it's just phenomenal what we're able to do. Um, and, you know, I, someone told me just the other day, man, y'all do a lot over there at that little college. But there's nothing <laughs> new about Piedmont Tech anymore. I mean, you know, we're talking about thousands of students, seven counties full, and uh, doing all the things that we need to do. But let's shift gears a little bit. And thank you for sharing all of that information. But one of the things I would like to do is let's talk a little bit more about Josh Lindsay. Not only are you Dean of Business Information Technology and Public Service at Piedmont Tech, you're also a former police officer, you're a marathon runner, you're a municipal court judge, and you're the author of a series of children's books. Man, where do you find the time? <laughs> hey, I tell you what, I'm blessed and highly favored. I, I have a good life right now. Um, fortunately, here at Piedmont Tech, I have learned to develop a lot of discipline. You know, not when you work in a job and you're dealing with a lot of students, you learn that you got to be very good with time management. And learning these different time management skills have allowed me to transfer that discipline over to other parts of my life. Because when I first started working here, I wasn't running marathons. I started running marathons because I said, as an instructor, I used to be an instructor before I became the dean. And as an instructor, I start seeing a lot of my younger students not in that good of physical shape. So I said, you know, if y'all want to go work out, guess what? I would run once a week with y'all. And we, a lot of students took me up on that. And we started running a mile once a week. Then it got to two miles. Then it got to three miles. So basically, I stopped at three miles with it. Yeah, basically, I would stop at three miles. But um, you're running a little bit further than three miles nowadays. Yeah, nowadays I run up to 26 plus. Uh, but <laughs> how many miles do you run a week, Josh? Just um, I, definitely run, I, I try to get in 70 miles a week um, to keep up that condition because I want to be good at it, you know? And I, the reason I do that, and I try to show these things to my students. So oftentimes when I have a student, they understand that if you can be physically disciplined, you can be mentally disciplined. And if I can get them to be mentally disciplined, we can produce better students. So that's one of the things I want for them. I want them to have a great life. Great. Um, 
municipal court judge. It's a great job. <laughs> uh, if you want to help the community, I don't even know what goes on in municipal court. What type of what type of cases do you get in municipal court? Could I wind up in municipal court because I have a traffic ticket that I haven't paid? That's exactly who you're going to go to if you if it happens in the city. <laughs> Let me make if sure. it happens in the city, you'll see a municipal court judge. If it happens in the county, you'll see a magistrate. Municipal court judges handle traffic cases and criminal cases at the city level. Uh, magistrate handle traffic cases and criminal cases at a county level. And they also do civil court cases. Then everything at a higher level is our state judges. Um, that's for everything that's considered a felony. Um, so hold on one second. Let me do a little teaching real quick. So there's two types of <laughs> the two types of cases, three really. It's petty offenses. Petty offenses would be like a traffic offense, somebody speeding or somebody um, failing to yield for a traffic sign, where then you have misdemeanor cases. Maybe somebody committed an act of disorderly conduct or a simple assault and battery. Those type of cases would be criminal cases that are handled in the municipal level or at the county level. But then if somebody commit a, a more serious crime that can get them put in jail for a year or more, those type of cases would be handled by a state court judge, sure. um, which are known as felonies. You know, now, so for all of our listeners, everybody out there, if you got a traffic ticket and you run into the, and, and you're in there and you see Josh, just say, hey, I saw you on PTC Live. And I'm going to say, well, <laughs> did you know any better? You knew better than commit that crime. There's not really too much I'm going to be able to do to help you out. But I always treat people fair. Yeah, no question about it. Now let's talk just 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 briefly before uh, you know we're, we're we're coming down to the end of our time. But you know, children's books. How'd you get into that? Oh, um, and how like have you written so far? I, I changed my career when I left South Carolina Law Enforcement Division. I went and worked for the University of South Carolina Children Law Center because I knew I wanted to help kids from moving into the adult criminal justice system. And that's the first way I found out during my research is that usually kids in third grade, that's where they shift change. When kids are, you know, from growing up to about the age of eight, they just kids and they just trying to be kids, do what kids do. But usually around the age of eight to 11, that's when they can start developing bad life skills. Mm -hmm. So I started writing books for kids at that age, between eight and 11, because I want to make sure we keep those moral value, morals and values uh, at a level where they are doing the right things. Um, we used to have the after school programs when I was growing up. You get out of school, you get the wire something, it was pretty good to tell you about the morals and values. The kids nowadays don't have this. So I decided to start writing books in that manner. And I do have an officer as a main character. And you know, to try to keep kids understanding that officers are good people. And because oftentimes they may be seen differently, especially like the situation going on nowadays. I want to make sure that kids understand they can trust the police and police are there to help them. And this police officer provide good information to them to help them resolve their problems. Well, Josh, we have a tremendous appreciation for the services that you provide for the college. Um, we have a tremendous appreciation um, for the services that you provide in all of our seven counties. Um, and to tie it all together, not only are you interested in working to build better children through your work and to adjudicate better decision-making in your work and to also develop better adults, highly trained adults so that they can go out and, su and, and support themselves at, at a high level in business, commercial arts, computer technology, criminal justice, early childhood development, and funeral services type fields. I want to take this moment to uh, thank you for coming on with us. The information that you've shared is invaluable. Um, and to thank you for your service. Well, thank you so much, Steve, for giving me the opportunity. Like I said, my job is easy because I have a great group of faculty and adjunct faculty that's here at Piedmont Tech and they teach and they do such a magnificent job. It makes my job a lot easier. So um, I want to give kudos out to my faculty and staff also. Excellent. Well, that's it. It's been another great 
uh, episode of PTC Live. Thanks, Josh Lindsay. Um, next week, same time, we'll be having another great show and we look forward to seeing you here as we continue to provide information about our fantastic institution, Piedmont Technical College. Have a good day.